you can't all of a sudden just nail a listing presentation. You can't all of a sudden just get a listing present a listing. <laughs> you can't all, all automatically just get a buyer. You got to keep putting things out there intentionally, following up with those folks. And then when you're in the situation, you're going to be solid. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today is what are you doing to move the needle? Like I, I am so excited and thankful and happy that you guys come on this call. I hope that it feeds you and helps your brain. I wonder, is it making you do things? And if it's not, what of all the things you've heard over the last, we've been doing this since December. So we've been in this seven months, at least almost eight. What can you do to move the needle? If you're not moving the needle, if we've been together for eight months and you guys haven't gotten anything under contract or you haven't gotten a listing or you haven't gotten a buyer, then we need to figure out what about this is not working for you because we come up with phenomenal ideas every day. And the whole point of this is to get business, right? We've done a few things that I know are effective. We've done the thing about, hey, my coach says I have to talk to 24 people in 24 hours. We've done the, hey, uh, I need help. I'm working out the kinks on a new system and I wanted someone to critique my presentation. Could I run the numbers on your house? Those two are the most solid, simple things that if you haven't done them, I encourage you to do them. Even if you do them, on your aunt dot, I have an aunt dot. Call aunt dot and say aunt dot, I am working on getting confident in my real estate stuff. I'm gonna call you back in five minutes. I want you to pretend that I'm calling you as a client. And then you call aunt dot back and role play with her. And then do a CMA on her house and send it to her and have her critique it. How was the presentation? Could you understand it? Was it good information? What could I do better? What did you not understand? So raise your hand, shoot a thumbs up somewhere if you can do that this weekend, like before Monday. Yay, we got a heart over there. So yes, if you can do it, did I see any hands up? Did I see any likes? Did I see any yeses in the chat? Okay, good, I see Dawn. All you're gonna do is call Aunt Dot, or if you don't wanna call Aunt Dot, actually call a client and do it that way. The point in that is who was ever an athlete of any kind or whoever had to learn something new? Raise your hand, throw a heart out there, throw a comment in there. Okay. The first time you do it, like we've talked about the little bitty baby, right? The little bitty baby wants to learn how to walk. We don't, once the little baby um, stands up and falls down, we don't yell, you suck. You suck, little baby. We don't berate the little baby. We do that to ourselves. But we're not like, hey, get, hey, you lazy ass, get up. We don't. We have patience and love with that little baby. And that little baby is going to keep trying, right? Now, here's the deal. The baby can only do as good as the baby can do, as, as good as they practice. They're not gonna level up all of a sudden. They're not just gonna get better because they've been reading stuff or they've been seeing the people do it, okay? You've got to do the practice and do the work, right? The baby keeps trying, the baby keeps trying, the baby keeps trying. And then when the baby's in a situation where it really wants to get to that cookie that's on the, bench then the baby's going to level up and get there because they've been practicing but they're still not going to get there you've got to you've got to be practicing so much and leveling up so much what's probably going to happen is that that baby's not going to get there the whole way they want that cookie they're not going to walk to it the first time because they don't know how to they haven't practiced right they're going to take two steps and then they're going to crawl the rest of the way because they're only as good as what they've practiced they can't all of a sudden just bust it out same with you you can't all of a sudden just nail a listing presentation. You can't all of a sudden just get a listing person, a listing. You can't all, all automatically just get a buyer. You gotta keep putting things out there intentionally, following up with those folks. And then when you're in the situation, you're gonna be solid. When you're in the situation, they're gonna have questions that you don't know, and that's okay. That's when you level up. That's when you leave that, you, you say to those people, hey, you know, I am not certain about whether that truly qualifies as a bedroom or not because the home is an old home and I know there's some grandfathering things so let me do this I'll go ahead and get over the paperwork I, I actually I have it with me right now I'll research that information and then that'll adjust our numbers I'll get you the numbers after we are secure on on that information like give them an expectation that you're going to get the information you don't have to know everything but you can't like fighters you're in the fighting ring the boxing ring right 
you're in the swimming pool. You're not all of a sudden just going to level up. You have to have been trying to level up continuously. And then maybe you might get lucky and nail that punch, nail that soccer shot, go 0.004 seconds faster, but it's not going to just happen. Okay. So this is about the practice, embracing the suck, embracing the suck. I don't believe that lead gen should suck. I believe lead gen should be enjoyable. You should be doing things that you like to do for lead gen. I also believe it will suck because you have to do it. For example, this morning, I don't know what you've done this morning, but this morning I've already contacted 20 people. I've written and negotiated an offer. I've talked to a lady about a repair request and that was all between 7.30. Oh, and I've set up a tour, a showing tour, and I've sent out four clients, potential search properties. So that was between 7.30 and 9.15 because I use that time intentionally. If you call me between 7.30 and 9.15, most likely I'm not answering you. I am in tunnel vision. That is my time to put my head down and do the work. And then at 9.15, I'm with you beautiful people. That time may be that I'm showering because I have to get to a closing or I have to get to an appointment or whatnot, right? But there will be a time every single day for at least an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I am in full on tunnel vision, blinders on, earphones in, doing my job. Because if I don't, what happens? Go bankrupt. I go bankrupt. I get nothing. If today you're like, I see Martha's drive, riding around in the car. Unless she gets motion sickness when she is riding, she needs to be on the phone, sending some text, messaging some people on Facebook, making some phone calls. If you have the luxury of riding in a car, my husband, poor baby, when we ride in a car, I'm like, sorry, baby, I'm going to work. For, and I'll tell him I'm gonna work for 30 minutes and I'll just zone in. I'm typing, 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 phone call, phone call, phone call, type, 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 type. And then the next 42 minutes are yours. Okay, I'm taking 17 minutes. Okay, now. And he just listens to his stuff and I put my headphones in because that is a luxury. Sitting in a car is a luxury. I wish I had a driver to drive me around because I would get some shit done. I would be like, it'd be a whole nother level of life if I just could sit around in a car. Also, let's say your babies are asleep. I know a lot of y'all have babies. Get that shower while the baby's awake. Put them in the little bouncy seat or put them somewhere, put them in front of a movie, take a shower. And then when that baby's asleep, tunnel vision. The house can stay dirty, okay? That house, if you will go get work, if you will go get jobs, clients, you can hire a cleaner. They can come do the laundry and clean the floors. <laughs> I know that sounds very bougie. I'm not bougie at all, but we've hired a cleaner in the last eight years. No, probably not eight years. We've probably done it the last five years. Game changer, because I don't look at it. Now I do vacuum. I'm obsessive about vacuuming. I vacuum mostly daily, but I also have a Roomba. There are things that will do my job for me. Turn the Roomba on, I do my job. Okay, so you guys got to drown out these distractions. Stop with the excuses. It's excuses or results. What do you want? If you want results, you got to do the work. If you're not hosting an open house this weekend, what are you doing? If you don't have an open house to host, what can you do? Find one, visit model homes, visit vacant homes, do virtual open houses. Okay, somebody was talking, I was talking to somebody about that the other day, I think it was Gina, because we she was like, I don't really love open houses. Okay, then a virtual open house, here's how we do it. Let's talk about that. Has anybody, has anybody done a virtual open house? No. Okay. So. A virtual open house. Somebody in your office, in your brokerage that has a listing, that's a vacant listing, preferably. If it's not a vacant listing, make sure that the, like maybe the sellers are going out of town for the weekend. So call around the people in your brokerage or put out a group chat in your group thing and say, who has a vacant home that I can do a virtual open house out this weekend? So a virtual open house, create an event, right? Or create an event on Facebook in the, all of those groups that you're a part of. Virtual open house, Saturday, two to four, and then register on Eventbrite. Who had a, an exclamation point light bulb go off when I said register on Eventbrite? Why would that be a good thing? Name, their info, email. You got all their info, right? So then you can also boost this. This is like, I'm just having my own little moment here. Do you guys remember the United Van Line post that I did? It's in our agent helping agent group. 
but if you don't remember it, go to United Van Lines. It shows you, they have a site and it shows you who is moving to your area. So it can say all of the people moving to Charlotte are from New Jersey, New York, California. So then if I want to boost a post or even just use hashtags to promote this virtual open house, hashtag New Jersey, hashtag real, hashtag New York, hashtag Hoboken, whatever cities you want to say, or I, I am in groups up in those areas. I am at a, in a garage sale group in pretty probably 15 cities that move here. And I post that virtual open house in those groups. Are you guys seeing this? Are you guys hearing this? Okay. I post the virtual open house. They register. I am at the house and I am doing a Facebook live, or you can make it a zoom where they come in and zoom with you and you do a video. We walk through the house with them. You interact with them just like they're in the house with you. They can't fly down, but they want to see that house. So are you actually physically in the house for two hours on a Facebook live? Yep. That's amazing. That's why I said, make it be an open house, make it be a vacant house or a house where the sellers are cool with you doing a virtual open house for two hours. So like, even if there's someone, okay, let's say there's someone doing an open house this weekend and you say, I, now I wouldn't do it this weekend. I think we're too late. This is what you, unless you do it Sunday, Sunday, you've got a little bit of time to advertise, but to do this successfully, do it next weekend. Okay. Because you need to advertise, you need to promote it. You need to build. Hey, are you coming to my virtual open house, virtual open house? Hey, did you know you could join, join me on zoom from two to four? You're moving to North Carolina, but you don't know, but you can't fly down here today. Boom, boom, boom. You're going to be in their face with this virtual open house. And then yes, that day you're going to be in the house from 11 to one. If somebody's already doing an open house from two to four, join their open house virtually. you be the virtual agent. You get all the virtual leads. They get all the in-person leads. Safety and numbers that helps with your safety as well. So if you see somebody doing an open house this weekend, say, Hey, can I join you and do a virtual open house? Okay, guys, we have opportunity. We have to make opportunity and think about how do we get opportunity? Okay. What about those states that people are moving out of? Gina said, um, if, well, if they're moving out of, you have a listing for sale. So they're moving out of them, but they're still in your area. There's still people flocking. They're moving. I think they're staying within, but you still have a listing to sell. So, um, whether they're moving in or moving out, it doesn't matter where they move into, then you find a good referral partner and say, Hey, I've got referrals. She's doing a virtual open house in Charlotte that might work for you. All right, we're over time. I love the idea of virtual open houses. I would, we can talk more about this and how to set it up. I'll make that part of our time next week where we can really break down how to do a virtual open house. I might even host one this weekend just for kicks to run the, run the kinks out of it. Okay. Okay. Go do good stuff. Join us on Monday, bring a friend and share some wins because you can do this. Okay. You can do this. Just get out there, go meet people put stuff out there, go to do the neighborhoods we talked about. If you haven't watched the videos the last three days, go on Instagram, watch the videos. There's a plethora of ideas on how to build your business. Okay. Give me high fives. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you. Um, Jamika. She said that that was good. I love you guys. I will see you on Monday. Call me, be me. Okay. Bye.